Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving further into the world of local SEO by examining Google My Business profiles and how you can optimize your profile for success. Um, in other videos, we've talked about building business citations. Uh, we've talked about uh, a free Chrome extension that's really a nice way to, to do competitive analysis and understand what should go into your profile. But I'm just gonna run through the different areas of the profile and what you need to optimize. Uh, to give yourself a better chance of showing up in Google Maps listings, right? So we're taking plumbers in Auckland as our example here. And plumbing is a very competitive niche. Uh, doesn't matter where you're at in the world. You can see that all of these Google My Business uh, profile listings have hundreds and hundreds of reviews. And that's really one of the big ranking factors um, when it comes to Google My Business. It's having a lot of reviews, a lot of positive reviews and responding to those reviews, right? That's another key component. Um, but I wanted to show this example specifically because this is an example of how you can do a, a couple extra optimization tweaks that border on over-optimization, but um, it still can be effective to do it this way. Uh, you just have to be a little bit mindful that there's a risk reward, right? So with this company, PlumQuick, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, so I'm looking at these for the first time, um, but this one just stood out to me. So PlumQuick is the name of the company. You can see here that in their Google My Business title, they're using a bunch of different keywords, right? These are all keywords that they're undoubtedly trying to rank for. And at the same time, it's also from a copywriting standpoint, it's good to include these um, in their case, right? Because these are all the services they perform and it can catch somebody's eye. If, if somebody's looking at these quickly, this is the biggest font of all, right? It's bigger than any other text you see in a listing. So this tends to stand out more so than these services down here. Um, but it's a little risky because obviously if, if Google wants to, they could say, well, that's not your exact name. And I'm not trying to single these guys out because there's a lot of companies that do this. And a lot of times they it's fine, but sometimes um, Google can come back at you and say, well, that's not your exact name. We, you need to change it or we're gonna get rid of your listing. In some cases, they'll get rid of your listing altogether, which is really, really bad, obviously. So typically, I would, I would err on the side of, um, of safety with this. You know, obviously, you wanna use your name, your business name, that goes without saying. Typically, you want your business name to include a keyword um, if you can. If, if you haven't, let's say that you're just filing a, a business license, and uh, you're trying to decide the name, I, it wouldn't hurt to add a keyword uh, for that local service that you provide, right? So like Grace Plumbing LTD, right? It has plumbing in the name. That's really easy. I mean, all of these have plumbing in the name. Plumbing's a niche where most companies have the word plumbing, so that makes it simple. Um, if you do like digital marketing or a different other service, um, it's good to include that in the name as well. Um, but let's just walk through this and, and see what's see what they're doing. Um, obviously the reviews are very helpful, like I said, but the other areas of, of your profile that need to be optimized, um, obviously your name, address, phone number, which stands for, N which the acronym NAP is probably something you've heard before, right? Um, name, address, phone number is very important. It's important to have that consistency throughout the internet, honestly. Um, obviously your Google My Business profile should have the correct name, address, and phone number but you should also have that same name, address, phone number listed on your business citations. And again, we have other videos uh, talking about that. You also want it listed on your website somewhere, probably in the footer, or at the very least on uh, the location page that corresponds with this uh, Google My Business location. But having that consistency is, is very, very, very critical. Google wants us to make that connection throughout the internet. And it even ties into your LLC, or if you have a limited, uh, if you filed a limited company, um, really doesn't matter what kind of business you file, but you want those details to be the same. So if you have an LLC with an address in one location, but you're listing an address on your profile in a different location, yeah, that's still okay to do, but it helps. It, it just gives you that extra little boost to have everything completely consistent. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is the services. So listing your services, th this is an area I think a lot of businesses struggle with, um, or they, they sort of just, they don't optimize it enough. And you can see here that this business really took the time to list anything and everything that they 
remotely cover, right? I mean, this is this is real again. This is this borders on too optimized, but this is really good. Now, this is what you want to do. So they have everything listed here under plumber. Plumber is obviously the main service category, but then they have drain cleaning, faucet installation, faucet repair. I mean, just go through the list. Every single little thing they do is listed here. Now, there's two ways to do this if you're a new business. Um, obviously, you can do competitive research, and the Chrome extension I showed you before called GMB Everywhere is really useful for this. Um, it shows you all the categories that your competitors are using in their profile, and so you can just kind of go through and, and you know snipe some of those. Um, obviously, pick ones that you, if you don't cover those services, then don't mention it, but, um, but um, you can basically go through and and look at what services they're using, what categories they're using, all the different details that could influence your, uh, your Google My Business ranking ultimately is there. Another cool, cool thing you can use is you can open up chat. This is chat, uh, chat GPT, obviously. I'm sure most people have heard of this. Um, I have the paid version, but I, you can do this with 3.52. It doesn't really matter. Let's go to 3.5 for the sake of this. So I would just type in give me, um, you could do categories first and then services. You could do give me category, give me GMB category ideas for a plumbing company based in Auckland, New Zealand, right? And it's going to give you tons of categories that you can include. And you can say, Give me a list of services for the profile and same thing. It's just going to spit out a million different things you can include. Um, so I would go through this and you know you can you can do two things. First, obviously you want to look at your competitors because they're ranking for a reason um, and make sure that you're including everything that's relevant to you that they might have on their profile. But then also use ChatGPT because you can use the free version and you can find other ideas as well. And just put everything together and put it in a spreadsheet if you need to, um, or just put it directly into your Google My Business profile like they have here. So those are that's the kind of the first thing, right? And then also they have their service area chosen. So obviously a plumber goes around to people's homes, so they serve Auckland. You want to make sure you have that service area set so that people. Because if people see that you don't serve their area, they're going to go somewhere else. Uh, they have their address there. And so with regarding the reviews, um, this is another interesting thing with reviews. So it, it, this is a harder thing to dictate. And obviously, you can't, you can't really manipulate reviews, right? But Google does tend to, they, they look at certain keywords that are used in reviews, and they will basically kind of they'll, they'll sort it um, by those keywords here so I don't know if you call these keywords these are more like um, category terms I, I suppose but if you can and it's not the easiest thing to do but when you're approaching customers for reviews it's really good to you know ask it in a way that elicits a a response which includes this the keyword you know which includes the service that you provided aka the keyword that you're trying to implement, right? Um, you know, and, and again, it's not the easiest thing, but you know, say something like, um, "Thanks for using our service. Um, we would love for you to leave us a review. Um, you know, love. We'd love for you to leave us a review here. Um, would you mind talking specifically about X service that we provided you? You know, something like that, to where it sort of triggers in their brain to mention that in the review." Um, you can do things like that and that's going to help you because when you look at Google My Business Profiles, a lot of times you will see um, it usually at the bottom when you're looking at the, uh, it, you know, from a, just a Google search view, it'll say um, this profile mentions uh, drain cleaning or, you know, it, it'll, me it'll mention a keyword like that. So, and sometimes that comes from the review. So it doesn't hurt to have that. And then of course you want to respond to every review. Um, you know, a lot of people don't, but it's really a good practice to do. And really from a customer service standpoint, it's a good idea, right? Because even if you get a couple negative reviews here and there, um, you know, just showing that you took the initiative to respond to it when a lot of business owners would turn a blind eye to a negative review, 
it shows a lot. I, I think people tend to respect that ultimately. The other area is are the photos, of course. So photos come in different, um, there's different categories of photos and you can see this when you're logged into your Google My Business profile uh, to the dashboard area. You can see that there's like a team section, uh, there's, um, there's uh, like outdoor pictures, you know, photos of the office section. Like, I, I can't think of the exact names offhand, but there's basically different categories that you can fulfill and upload them into those categories. Um, I always recommend taking pictures of anything with branding on it. So here we have a team photo with the truck. This is beautiful. This is exactly what you want. We have just a standalone truck, right? We have another team photo. We have some pictures on the job pictures. Uh, we have like, um, this is probably more of a, like a, a background or uh, they call it a cover photo. So you just want to do stuff like this to really get that branding across. And I would add anywhere from, this is going to sound crazy, I would add anywhere from 20 at the minimum, and I would go all the way up to 30, 40, 50, and beyond if you could, honestly. And you can also, when you ask for reviews, you could ask customers, uh, hey, can you send a photo of this? Like if you installed a new water heater, say, hey, can you mind sending us a photo of the new water heater um, you know, with your review or something like that? That's always great too, and you you can empower. So the beauty with uh, the beauty of having mobile phones everywhere is everyone has a camera, uh, which is can be good or bad, I suppose. But in this case, it can be good because you can have your crews as a business owner. You can tell your crews, "Hey, can you take like one of the, one of the SOPs can be take uh, three to five photos on the job, right, or something like that." And a lot of times they'll do it anyway, just to kind of show their proof of work and and that sort of thing, but. It, you never know when you're going to want to use some of those. Um, it's good to upload as many as you can to your profile just to show that you uh, you facilitate a lot of different types of services. Like here, and they could probably even, they could afford to add more photos, definitely. There's a few here, but um, you know, I'm wondering if you look around, you might see other profiles with many more photos. Like here, uh, this is, this is the, and this is the number one ranking GMB uh, for plumbers in Auckland. Now, of course, a lot of this is location-based, but um, this has a lot fewer reviews than this one, but it has way more photos. Um, it could be optimized in other ways, in better ways, who knows. But, um, and you can see here, they do have an update section, which means they're doing Google posts. So this is the other area of the profile I wanted to mention. And this one actually didn't look like they were doing any Google posts. So this could be an area where you can grab a leg up on your competition. It looks like that's what they're doing, right? So they have Google posts. They haven't done it in a while, but they still have them, right? Um, these sorts of Google posts, they, they will, they're basically evergreen. They don't go away. I mean, look at the dates here. You can see 2021. So it's a good idea to, to post Google posts regularly. I recommend doing it a few times a month if you can. And there's a lot of software tools that let you automate that process uh, very easily. Or if you're working with an agency that does other things for you, um, they can obviously do that do that process as well but it's a good idea to include these um, the, so I think I've talked about Google posts from a design standpoint um, you can you can use photos like they, they're using here that's perfectly fine as well or you can use graphics like this this looks like something you can make in Canva which I've shown a tutorial on how to do that it's very simple uh, but the key with Google posts you want to make it as salesy as possible right like don't confuse um, Google posts with social media posts. I think a lot of businesses make that mistake. Um, Darren from Whitespark, whitespark.ca, uh, he's, he's actually been very, uh, very upfront about that, talking about that a lot, how um, that's one of, kind of one of his pet peeves with Google posts. Um, Whitespark is a citation building company anyway, but he's been very uh, adamant that don't treat it like a social media post, right? You want to treat Google posts like they're a sales pitch, like you're uh, highlighting your top services, you're highlighting any discounts, any, um, any sudden offers that, that are available. Now you can mention if, if it's around the holidays, you can say happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you wanna do. Um, but just keep in mind, the majority of your posts should be more sales oriented. It should say something like, if you, uh, like here, we have extra bookings available this week. Like that's a decent, that's a decent Google post headline, right? I mean, that's, it's implying that, oh, you, sh you know, we can, we can come help you if you call us today, right? We have extra time. 
Um, and you want to you want to really focus on that, right? Um, it doesn't hurt to have some info style content as well, but I would keep it very heavily skewed towards the sales side. Um, so that is, come get if it's a med spa, come get a massage. If it's um, a plumber, use this uh, discount code for 10% uh, off your next plumbing job or whatever. You know, stuff like that is um, is really where these things shine. Um, I think a lot of businesses use them whenever they post a blog, they'll put the blog link there. I, I think that's kind of a waste of space when it comes to Google posts. That's the kind of stuff you want to do on your Facebook page, Twitter, whatever. But for this, this is this needs to stay more commercial sales oriented. So I would go that route uh, when it comes to Google posts. And the only other area I can think of right now off the top of my head, we talked about most of this, the business description. So with the business description, this is another area where I think ChatGPT has just changed the game, honestly. I think, it, I'm speaking about myself here, I could, ChatGPT could write me a better business description than I could, or at least it would take me a while, it would take me longer to come up with it on my own versus plugging some data points into chat and having them do it. Especially if you have ChatGPT Plus, because with ChatGPT Plus, you can use Website Scraper plugin where you can input your URL or your uh, of your about page, for example, and you can tell it, hey, based on this about page, uh, can you take the information from this page and turn it into a compelling Google My Business business description, right? And it will do that. Chat will take that information. So it would do something like this, where it would say, it's a family business run by so-and-so, 20 years. It would do something like that for you in your description. So that's, that's a route where I, I recommend a lot of people to do that now, just because it's so easy. Um, but let's look at this one. So obviously we have the business name, Grace Plumbing, and we have some words that I wouldn't call them keywords, but they are, they are good. I, I call them good words to use, right? Good terms to use uh, from an SEO standpoint. So they have family business, 20 years experience. So right there you're saying we've been, we've been around the block. We know what we're doing, where we are based in, right? So this is the, the, the suburb of Auckland that they're based in to be really specific. Um, we have a talk about our specialties. So now we're using service terms, which are important to use. Hot water cylinder installation, residential plumbing, renovation, new build. Uh, and then describing the quality of the work, right? So we have quality workmanship, client satisfaction. These are all terms that people want to see when they're looking at a, at a business description. Um, so this is, this is really an excellent structure. I, I'm glad I stumbled onto this one because this is the structure that you want. Um, let's see, I know they have one too. So theirs is really, again, uh, it's very keyword heavy. Um, I, I like this one. I like this one better um, just from the standpoint of um, the way it's structured. It's, it's, it's also built more for humans, less, less for just keyword stuffing, um, which, which I think is good for a business description. The other area too that they have, I'm not sure that these guys have it. I don't think they do, but so this is another area where they're pretty well optimized is the detail section. So you can add extra details, especially if you're a service-based business like this. In their case, they say right up front that they don't do online estimates and that appointment is required. So that's good on two fronts. One, it's extra information to input into your profile, which makes it better optimized. But two, it helps consumers because maybe somebody uh, has an emergency or something and they're not able to schedule an appointment or they, for some reason, they can't come, um, they can only do online, they can't come in, right? Um, so they wouldn't be able to use this plumbing service, which is okay, it's good to know that up front, instead of wasting your time getting a phone call from somebody, hey, my basement's flooded and I, I can't make an appointment, you know, it, it's better to, to know what you're getting into up front, because then they can go down and use one of these other guys, uh, or whatever they want to do. So that's, that's, Pretty much it, and then of course your hours goes without saying. Um, don't be one of these people. If, if, if you don't, if you're not available to answer the phone 24 hours a day, don't put that you're open 24 hours a day. Please don't, because you're only gonna you're gonna end up hurting yourself more than helping. Um, I know people want to think, well, if I say if I say I'm open 24 hours a day, then I'll never be turning down business. But yeah, but you kind of will, because there's gonna be days, especially if you're a Monday through Friday service business like this you know, you're probably doing stuff on the weekends with your family. Like, if you're not there to answer a call, you, you could lose that, that customer. I mean, you can lose that lead 
um, if you don't call them back in 10 minutes, right? Because they'll just, they're just going to go through, they're basically looking at this, right? They did a search, they're looking at all these, and they're just going through one by one calling. So you need to be truthful about your hours of availability and don't try to be Superman and pretend that you're available around the clock because we know we know that's not true. And that's about it. Those are the essentials for optimizing your Google My Business profile. Technically, it's called Google Business Profile now. I know that uh, we are just I, we're so used to saying GMB. We just you know it's it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I think is the saying. Um, so anyway, that's how you optimize this thing, whatever it's called. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. Feel free to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you soon.